So I, as I said earlier, loops, loops in C programming. That's what we're talking about today. And uh, loop also means repeat. All right. It also means repeat loops in uh, C programming. All right. So we're talking about loops in C programming and how does loop work. I'm going to show you how it works perfectly in this class. All right. So now let me give you a practical example of a loop. If you, for example, I think everybody here uh, have a music player on their phone. Maybe there's somebody that doesn't have a music player. Apologies. I think I'm going to, that's a very common example. All right. In your, whatever it is, your music player, there is also, there's always, uh, there's always uh, a feature called loop or repeat. Yeah. It's, it is the word is used interchangeably that it's loop or it's repeat. And the work of this is, for adventure, if you're listening to a song and the song is very interesting, you want to keep listening to the same song over and over again without you having to play the song again. So you just put it as a repeat or loop single or whatever it is. It fits this particular song. So that means when the song ends, it plays again from the beginning. That's what you did to Antonio. It keep it keep looping. Yeah, keep looping. Yes. All right. It keep looping until you end the song or you change the loop. Or you're off the loop or whatever. It's just keep looping until certain condition is met. I hope you understand that. Yeah. So that's 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 just the simple definition of, of the loop. And in this tutorial, you will learn what to learn uh, about loop. So what does loop repeat? Loop repeats a block of code in C, in programming in programming generally. A loop repeats a block of code until the specified condition is met. All right. And I, I've told you what a, a block of code is, right? Where are they? Where are they? Where are the coily breeze? Let's say I have a coily breeze here. Coily breeze here, and let's say it's it ends here, right? This is a coily breeze. Now, so I can have as more than one line of code. Let's say I say print f. What do I want to print now? Uh, one minute. Let me change my keyboard to dress. So that I can, okay. So I say, when F, uh, good morning. Okay. When F, good morning. Now, and uh, both line seven and line eight, right? They are inside the block. Do you understand? What I'm by the block of code now. So the block of code is braced by this coily brace and this coily brace. All right. Are we together? Yeah. So I said a loop. A loop. A loop is used to repeat a block of code. So that means until a specified condition is met, right? So that means what we want to repeat now is this. We want this to be keep printing, good morning, uh, hello world, good morning, hello world, good morning, hello world, good morning, until a condition is met. So, so in loop, we have three different types of loops. Let me try this. I want to say that we have three different kind of loops. So we have the four loops. We have the while loop. And we have the third one now, 
do have the do while loop. The do, do uh, while loop. Okay. So we have the do while loop. These are the three types of loops that we have in C programming. And most times in most programming languages. All right. So are we still together? Yeah, well, I'm still here. Yes. All, right. All right. Now, let me clear this now so that we can. So we're going to start from the for loop. So I told you we have three types of loop the for loop, the while loop, and the do while loop. So I'm going to I'm going to paste the syntax of the for loop so that we can start by that. All right. Now can you see my screen? Yes. Let me write. Yeah, I can see it. Um, syntax of a for loop. Okay. So this is the syntax of the for loop. And this is how it works. I'm going to be explaining this to us. So now, the first thing we have for the for loop, remember the last class we spoke about conditional statement, and I told you that uh, we are for the conditional statement, we have the if outside, right? And an open and close parenthesis. And inside that, we have your text expression. This is remember. All right. So the same, the same uh, manner we have. You can see, line seven, we have the the four syntax. That's the syntax of the for loop. All right. And the first thing we have here is the initialization statement. So can you see it? Initialization statement. So what is an initialization? What's what what does initialization statement means? in uh, C programming. What does initialization statement mean? Means? Anybody? Um, an initialization statement is just like what you use, for example, now, if you say for i equals to zero now, meaning that from, is from that zero, you are starting, you are starting from, you are starting with yeah, it's from that area yeah, initializing it. That's where it's, your loop is going to start. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that. Now, I'm asking this question so that we can just actually have an interactive class. So if you don't know the answer, don't bother and don't feel bad. Yes. You are here because you don't know what it means. So I don't know if somebody actually knows what that means. So I hope somebody's not feeling bad. I don't know what it is. If you know what it is, it will not be here. So, it's all right. Thank you for that powerful one. Now, as I have said, an initialization statement is where your, uh, your, your, the value for your variable begins from. But it's more than that. So let me just show you what it's a, Now, let's say we say, um, in uh, age, right? I think I, we are so familiar with age, right? So if I say, age equals uh, 30. I hope you still understand this, man. Right? What we just did yeah. is that we created an empty, empty variable, which is an integer variable on line six, and we added 30 as a value to um, seven. Now, what is the initializing statement here? It's line seven. That means we are initializing age to be 30. The, the first, the first, uh, the first input, the first data input of a variable is this initialization uh, statement. Now, for example, I can say, I can come and say age equals 50 and say again that age 
a plus uh, 70, right? Now, which of these is an initialization statement? Seven to nine. It is seven. It's because the first time I initialized seven and age rather, age was 30. Do you understand? The first value I at first what or the in, just like the word initial that was the initial data the initial uh i don't have to explain this beyond this one i also by getting this. the first value that is imputed and this is example this illustration set is not uh, perfect let me do something else let's see okay let's see let's say age uh, or let's say plus plus h and here let's say h right h times h but h must apply by h all right so let's say i want to print h now come in Let's print. Uh, let's print that uh, your yeah your age is uh, percentage D. What now? Age of year. Eh? All right. So okay, this is a very large figure. Let me say this so that we want to struggle with our arithmetic and that is add an additional sign binary plus it. so what the value of each what will line 10 point mm -hmm. anybody the value of age since you are incrementing it the value of age should be Should be what? I can't hear you, Mr. Fell. Somebody say something. Am I connected? Hello? Yes, you are connected. All right. Okay, so let's let's oh. actually let's 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 solve this puzzle together. Initially. Now, now this this is where I'm going to, and this I'm not trying to show you, right? I'm trying to show you what an initialization statement means actually. So now let's watch this. Initially, what was the value of age? Age was thirty, right? Is that true? Yeah. All right. So on line eight, we incremented age with by one. We use an increment uh, operator. I hope you remember plus plus each yes right so it becomes what's now 31 is that true yes Ninja, right. one. Yeah. yeah and on line nine we say h plus h that means 31 plus 31 right yes. do, do we get that yeah so 62 so H should be, let's run this and say H should be 62. So you can see. So I think. Can you see that it says your age is 62? Yeah, I can. See. Am I, am I the only one saying that? Can we all see that? All right. Now, let me go back to the main code. Now, back to our main dot C. You can see that. Uh, Out of all these quotes, which one is our initialization statement? Which line is it? Um, line seven. Uh. All right, thank you. That's all I just want to show you. Then all of those are uh, adding you to everywhere I carry you to. I'm just trying to show you that. That's your initialization statement is where the, the initial value of a variable. I hope you understand. 
Yeah. So, okay. So now I'm trying to show you. All right, let me clear this. So now, the initializing statement is uh, 30, right? Is H equals 30, is that true? Are we together? Yeah, well, um, well, see you. All right, so let me not make this a comment again, since we are back here. All right, so now, that means in the for loop, I told you there are three types of loops, right? And the for loop, uh, initializing statements, we must be inside the four parentheses. Line seven, this line seven must be here. Do you understand? Okay, but I think this is lower than my what? Do you get this now? Yes. That means you just create an empty yeah. variable. Then you are going to initialize by inside your four parentheses. So can we do that now? Let us clear this. Yes. And so age, age equals to 30. Yeah. Age equals to 30. Is that fine? So we're going to take yeah. this away from okay. here. So I did all of that to just show you what an initialization statement is. It's not something, but the word the way it sounded sound like one deep uh, deep syntax. It's not true. All right. So test expression. What is uh, test expression? Okay, don't let me ask the question for most of our time. Test expression is just simply what you do with the relational operator. For example, test expression is uh, h if h uh, is greater than uh, what now? Than 10. This is text, text expression. Hmm? Do you understand? This is a text expression. Yes. Are we together? Yeah. Then we have the update statement. The update statement can either be here or it can also be here it can also be here yeah just the same way you can do your int age equals 30 or you say int age first and do you understand yeah so let's put it here let's put it here for better understanding mm. All right. So what's, what's an update statement? Um, an update statement is just like, yeah, updating the value. It's just like incrementing it, changing the value to something. Yeah. To something else. What, what, yeah, incrementing, decrementing, adding, subtracting, dividing. Anything you do to the value, you are updating it either positively or negatively. You understand? So let's say let's update this statement. Let's say plus plus age, right? Um. So now let's let's add up. Uh, I want to ask. So, uh, I usually see the value at the back. Um, or can it be written either way, like at the back or at the front? Because the one I usually see is usually H. In this case, it would be H plus plus, or in this case, yeah, it's plus plus H. So I want, I want to clarify whether it can be written either way. I've answered this question. 
I think the name, probably your name class there, you know, so it's all that so you do increment and decrement uh operator. And that will take some time. All right, now it, you are the same, just that uh one is instant and one is futuristic. Okay. I'm coming, I will explain that in some minutes. Let me just finish on doing. All right, so uh so let's add our code here. Let's a uh, let's print that. This is what we want to do because we can have, we can have as many lines of code as possible. So let's say we want to print that. Uh, want to say let's make this age zero. Let's want to print from one to zero. So let's say age is zero. All right. This can be even any number, but for the example I want to use, and let's say, this is less sign. Yeah, less than 10, it is less than 10. All right, so let's say, let's print that. Um, let's print, let's print, let's print one. Let's say your age is a uh, your age is percent D, right? I will write age. You will still get. I will still explain everything, so don't fret. All right. You can add a new line here. Let's add a new line so that because. To keep repeating that. All right. Now, if I run this program, all will be the outputs. Somebody say something. Um, I think it's going to be for. Zero to nine or so. Okay. So this will point eight. Your age is zero. Your age is one. Your age is two to nine. So let's run this and see. All right. Uh Mr. King, your microphone is the background is noisy. All right, now somebody will ask me, should ask me. Why is this like this? I'm going to explain. You have to watch this output. It printed your age is zero, so your age is nine. All right. So let me let me explain now. Now, on line six, we created an empty variable called age. Right? I will need a response so that we can I can know we are getting this. Is that true? We created an empty variable called age, right? On line yes. six, yes. All right. Yeah, on line six. Yeah. All right. So let let me let me let me remove this this comment so that we can see clearly. Okay. So now, on line eight, we added our for loop, and inside our for loop parentheses, we initialized age, right? And the value of age is what? Yeah. Um, the value is from the value of age is zero. Yeah, the initialized value of age is, is zero. Now, we now did a text expression. Is that true? We said yeah. age is less than 10. Do you understand? Yes. Is that true or false? Um, that's yes. Age is less than 10. So, if that test expression is true, then the body of the loop we run. Do you understand? Yes. Are we together to this point? Yeah, all good. All right. So the body of the loop, since age is less than 10, since the, the, the statement of the expression is true, then C will print your age 
is zero, right? Do you yeah. understand? Because the value of it was the value of age as at now, as at this point, is still zero, right? Yeah. Zero. But so it is still zero and it's going to create a new line, right? Is that true? Yeah. And now line eleven, you suddenly increase the value of age from zero to what? One. To one. Because plus plus age will increase the value of age to one. Age was initially zero, and now age is one. Is that true? Yeah. So, all right. So now, now that age is one, now age is one. So when you get to this this place, right? Can you see my cursor is online? So when you get yeah. to this place, the 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 the, the, the block of code will not be broken. Do you know why it will not break? It is because it's a loop. It will only break when the text expression is false. Do you understand? So, no, so, the so the compiler will return back to line eight. I hope you understand. Yeah. So that means it broke when it reached ten. It did not break. It, it did not break. Yeah, it will break. Yeah, it broke. It, it broke when. Yeah, it broke when it reached ten. But okay. I, I, I want to get that please. Yeah. Yes. All right. So when it gets to line twelve, age is now one. Is that true? In our illustration, is that true? Uh -huh. All right. All right. Can, can we have some other people responding apart from Mr. Femi? I just want us to just get along and get this part. So I hope, I hope we are getting it. Yes. All, right. all right all right so now age is now one because we have incremented age on line 11 right so age is now one it's no longer zero so because this is a loop the compiler returns back to the four parentheses here can you see and it will update this statement do you understand So now yeah. age is now one. Age is no longer zero. Then it will now check is one less than ten. Is it true? Yes. Right. I can't hear our response. Okay, true. Yes. All right. So that means that if we if it, this is true, then if you run this book, this block again, is that is that true? And we say your age is one. Is that true? Because age is now one as of now. Yeah. And create a new line and increment age again. So age becomes two. Right? It returns back to line eight. Since age is down two, is two is age less than ten? Yes, right? Yeah. So if you print your age is two, create a new line, then update this the value of age again by the plus plus age age becomes three is that true yeah. yes so it keeps going repeating until let's say age is now age is now nine do you understand yeah so let's say it prints your age is nine you know it will, it will increment age again right and age will become 10 is that true yes are we together? Yes. Yes. So, so let's say age is now 10, and it returns here and says age is 10, right? Yeah. All right. So is age less than 10? False. It is false because 10 is not less than 10. So at that point, it will break this loop. Do you understand? Yeah. And we go to the next line of code, which is line 13. And line 13 is return zero. That means the, the program will be terminated. Do you understand? Yeah. Yeah. Let, let's add the print. Let's add the print F. Yeah, so you see that. Uh, no, return zero will not print anything. So let's say 
let's print that. Uh, let's just say the end. Or let's say the the program has uh, been terminated, right? All right. So let's add the semicolon. Now, since the program has been terminated, so that means so let's run this again. And let's see. So can you see? That means it broke out of the loop when it got to 10. It could not, it could not, it, it was false. So and when anytime the test expression is false, the loop uh block would break. Do you understand? Yeah, all good. Yes, Did I hear somebody say a question? So I'm going to say answer the question of the person that asks for the the plus plus sign at the back. So let's say what if we increase this to from 10, let's say we increase it to or let's say we say age is less or equals to 10. What will happen? Okay. Okay. Since it's less or equals to 10, it's it still from it will still go on to 10. It's by when it's 11, it's when the program terminated. Since it's still equals to 10 and still less, so oh, it's time it's running from 0 to 10. So once it reaches right. 11, so the program will be, the loop will break. So let's see. Yeah, that's correct. You can see that it's running from zero to ten. Yeah, can you see my screen, please? So are we together? Sure. So what what if you don't add this update statement on 9-11? What we have? Let's make this a, a comment. So let's say line 11 is not part of the program. What will happen if there's no update statement? Since there's no update statement. It will print it your age is zero. Yeah. Okay. That it, it will just print your age is zero. Since it's not updating the value, it's not even reach one. All right. But yeah, it's correct. But the thing is this, it will print your age is zero to infinity. This it will call it will call bring an infinite loop. The reason is because after it prints your age is zero, it will keep printing until this expression is false, right? Is that true? Yes. This yes. text expression. And so this will always be true. Do you understand? It will never be false. Are we together? Yes, we are. Yes. Yeah. Since of, so, so that means if you print your age is zero, if you run again, age is still zero, right? And is age less or equal to 10? Is it true? That's true. That means the test expression will never be false. That means the loop will never break. So let, let's run this and see what, what happens. If your memory, if your uh, let's say you are running this on the line of and you are not sure of your computer memory, don't try it because it will keep running. So can you see? So I'm scrolling now. Can you see that? Oh my why is this very slow to respond? Because it's, I think I have to disconnect this. So can you see that as I'm it's it is pointing this is my screen? Yes. Yeah, you can see. Yes. So it should keep printing, it's put this one an infinite loop because the I told you this is repetition. So this will keep printing forever. So let me stop this so that I will not run out of memory. Okay. So if you keep printing 
your age is zero, see you forever because you do not add any. So the work of the update statement is to make the test expression force at some point so that the loop can break and the uh, code can end. Is that clear now? Yeah. So, so let's make this a uh, on range, right? So will it print zero to on range? Will it? Yes. It yes, it has. So it printed uh, zero to hundred. Don't mind this ninety-eight that came out. Is an error from the compiler. So if you run this again, it should not do that. Let's try and run this again. So can you see that? All right, so uh, I, you understand now. This is how it looks like. Yeah. So tonight we'll be dealing only with the for loop. So I'm going to do an exercise on the for loop, and uh, I want you to do that again and again. All right. So let's say we want to do a two times table. All right. So let's call this uh let's call this norm like number all right and uh because this will also be norm right this to be norm all right This also the norm. Okay. So if you come here and say and say uh, norm. Norm equals the uh, percentage, right? I'll put norm here, right? We should have norm equals to zero, norm equals to 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 ten to hundred, right? Yeah. Let's get a new line. And let's just make this twenty. All right. So let's run this now. What are we going to see here? Um, there should be a semicolon. All right. So now, okay, there's an error again. Yeah. Okay. Okay, sorry, there's really some colon after. 
after 20 because it's a statement. All right. Okay. What is your work on? All right. So you can see printed this because we, we did not add a new line. I don't know why this is happening to my computer. Okay. Let's let's add a new a okay. Excuse me, you've not added the new line yet. Have you? I feel like yes. Give me a minute. I think uh, something is wrong with my. So let me let me run this again. Please. Right, so I have to remove that because I don't like it. something that was wrong with uh, my cursor. Okay, all right. So now let me do this. I'm going to add a new line here. Yeah. So now we are here. All right. So let me run this program so that we can see the output now. You have not added a new line. You have added that. All right, can you see the outputs now? There's a num number is uh, one to twenty. All right. Okay, so what we're going to do now is this. I want to show us just one more thing and end this class. All right, so let's say we want to have a multiplication table. Please pay attention here. Um, I don't know why this is very slow. I've left this interface for some seconds now. So I think my output is slower than it should be. I don't want to stop sharing and share again. Or I should do that. I don't show something for you. So let me just continue. We don't have to All right. I wish you to get up. Yeah. All right. All right, so now let's say, let's say we add this is really slow. Please give me a minute, let me stop sharing my screen and share again. Probably if we. Okay.
Okay, so I'm sharing my screen again. I think it should be faster now. All right, so uh, I said norm here is a uh, I don't know why this is slow. I've shared my screen and it's up to so it's okay. It's now working. All right. So what's if you want to have a multiplication table? How do we go with that? Deprecation. How is my screen? Right. Yeah. So let's say we want to go with the multiplication table and we say and what if we come here and say uh, what the fuck? and we just say Let's say we create another integer and say uh, multiply, right? Yeah. And we come here, I will say let's multiply the equals to two. So let's say multiply is two, right? No, no, don't let's say that. That's only complicated for you. Let me just if I just do an algorithm. Okay. Let's come inside this loop and say yeah. Multiply, right? Multiply equals to two multiplied by one. you understand this. Yeah. What happened is that on line seven we created another variable, which is an integer variable called multiply. And on line ten, we say multiply equals to two times one. You understand? Yes. So let's see. Let's come and see. Let's say we say multiply okay, I think it should be multiply, right? I, I think this is a this is this is the correct spelling. Um, no, there should be an um, it's M U L M U L. All right, thank you. So it should be this. I think I right. Yeah. Thank you. Just say something about all right. So we say multiply multiply, yeah. Multiply equals to what's gonna be here is going to be multi multiply, right? So what's gonna what's multiply going to be now? It's going to be zero. Let's let's hold on this. Zero, zero times two, two, four, like that, like, just like that. Yeah. 
multiply. All right. Let's run this now and see. I think there's an error. Let's try that again. Oh, sorry. Is it incrementing norm instead of more? We're incrementing norm, yeah. We're incrementing norm, sorry. Now, let's run this and see what happens. You can see zero, two, four, six, eight to 40, right? So let me show you what happens. How my screen is responding? Slow. Yeah, it's... I'm trying to wait for this to return, okay? Now, what happened here is this. I created on line six, we created a uh, norm, and on line seven, mm -hmm. we created multiply. That's a variable. Now, on line eight, we said norm equals okay. zero. And if norm is less or equals to 20, the block of code should be run, right? Yes. Yeah. Should run, yeah. So now, on line 10, you added the value to multiply. And the value that multiplies two times whatever the current value of norm is, right? Yeah. So at this point, no number is a zero, right? Norm is zero. Is that true? Yeah. That's true. So two times zero will be zero, right? So and we printed the current value of multiply, which means multiply equals to zero, right? And we got a new line. Is that true? Yes. So like testing, we incremented norm by one. That means number or norm. Let me use norm. Norm is now one right and because number is still less or equals to 20 the block of code will still run so line 10 will be multiplied equals to two times what now one times two two times one yeah two multiplied by one because the current number the current value of norm is now one is that true yeah yeah and the value of, and the value of multiply will be two now so multiply will print multiply equals to two and create a new line and increment number by one again that means number will be equal to two right mm -hmm. and because two is still less than 20 the block of code will run and multiply will be equal to two times two because the value of number is down two so multiply will print four and like that it will keep it will keep doing that until the value of number is greater than 20 right now when yeah. number is greater than 20 the block of code will let's run this again let's watch this so can you see that we have zero two so we have the multiple of two do you understand yes so what let's say we put we have 30 here instead of two we say we had 30 so it's going to be three times, right? Three times. Yeah. yeah, three times, no. <coughs> so you can see zero, three, six. So we have a multiple of three. Right? Let me scroll down so that you can see. So let me do one more thing. Now, what if we now decide to say that uh, we 
you want to make it more clear we say okay so what all the difference anybody line 12 over line 12. it will just print the values it will print the answer line equals to just print the exact values on a new line each after the first, first value on one line go to another line print the next value instead of multiply equals to all right thank you so let's now say we want to actually ask what that looks like the multiplication table that we are used to one we use in the elementary school so what do you do just come here and say um let's say percentage g okay or i would say two uh times percent d okay now i will come here and say no all right now what happens now is okay let me let me change this back to two so that we can just have two thank you excuse me all right so i will together now yeah so we say when we say multiply equals to two equals to two times norm that means the value of number will be zero right is that true yes so we're going to print two times what what is the format the first format specifier which variable is a e printing <laughs> So norm, so norm. Yeah, it's printed to norm. So if you print two times zero equals to the value that is inside multiply, which is zero, right? Okay, let, 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 let's let's try that. So that we see how I'm Let's let me run this and we get some fancy. So can you see? We have a multiplication yeah. thing. So let's say we just want to. Uh, what do you want to? Uh, let's say we want. 13 times table, right? So why can't you just make this 13 further? Let's give it a space so that it can be clear. I run this again. So you can see, we print. And you can keep printing this. So let's say we want to add, we want to just put 100 here. So do you know what, we, what we're going to see? Instead of 20, we add an 100. That means we print 13 times 13 table. Times 100. So from 0 to 100. So we're going to see something like this. So this is the power of what a loop can do. So you can just write a simple C loop. Uh, and some classes here, yeah, we're going to be giving a simple calculator software. And you will see how easy C and interesting C can be. So without you doing anything, 
not doing any calculation. The computer does everything for you. And uh, you have all of this. So, uh, that's just that about uh, tonight's class. So, the assignment now is that you just you work on any loop, whatever you want to do, do any loop. You can, you can watch the video again. The video should be dropped on the group. The link to the video should be dropped earlier today or tomorrow. So, watch in case you need to rewatch to understand because we are moving to the wide loop to the next class. And it's not be nice if we are. Uh, I'll be able to learn something so far. Yeah. Yeah. So let, let me answer. Somebody asked the question. On, uh, all right. So ask your question. Uh, on this line 12, where we are okay. passing, I think so far on ALX, we've been getting some of that because we we'll use, make use of other um, alphabets. Like, my question is what's the essence of that alphabet D? Like, I don't think, are, are you getting what I'm trying to ask? Like, the alphabets we use in those places, what's the essence of, like, what's the functions of those alphabets? Like, I think I've seen a code where they use percentage, hen, percentage, e, or something else, yeah. What's the use of here? Thank you. Uh, percentage D is the format, percentage alphabet is the format specifier. Yeah. Okay. It we it's a format specifier for an integer. It is because num and multiply are variable and they are integer variable. Other use percentage g. So okay. let's say they are they are character variable, we use percentage c. Let's say they are floats variable, that's variables with decimal, we use percentage f, double we use lf for string. If they are string, that means I think you should. Okay, we don't have the recording on the class on our variables, and that was the first. I think second or third class. So for for if you have child, then you should have that the percentage s, depending on what the data type is. So the data, data type of the norm and multiply they are integers, and the format specifier. It's called the format specifier. Yeah, okay. the format specifier for an integer is percentage G. And you know what an integer is? All numbers. It is it yeah. used. So that's what it is. There are different format specifiers for different uh, uh, variables and data types. 